Um, yes, yeah, so good afternoon uh, again. Uh, so uh, this is the third uh, presentation on our uh, instruments for ethical guidelines. Uh, this one as well um, was developed uh, with the aim to promote further uh, the, uh, ethical, uh, the uh, ethical AI uh, practically. Um, uh, and this is a proposal for an ethics uh, as attention to context for AI. So uh, here we go. As you know, um, over the past few years, uh, the ethics of AI has generated a, a lot of interest. Uh, we have seen uh, the development of uh, numerous uh, ethics guidelines. Here you see uh, a few of these. Um, uh, these have primarily taken the shape of uh, ethics uh, principles, uh, high-level uh, abstract uh, pres prescriptive um, principles. Uh, for instance, uh, you can see here the ethics guidelines for the AI uh, by the high-level expert group on AI set up by the Commission. Uh, also, the recommendations of the Council on uh, AI uh, by the OECD. Uh, and on the industry side, uh, the Google AI uh, principle. You, see, you can see a screenshot of these um, on the slides. The researcher uh, Anna Jobin uh, and her co-authors have uh, looked at these uh, uh, ethics guidelines, uh, especially uh, 84 of these. Uh, they have analyzed them and uh, looked more specifically at the um, ethical principles uh, that uh, these uh, guidelines um, uh, highlight. Uh, so uh, the principle of uh, transparency, justice and fairness, non-maleficence, responsibility, uh, this are uh, principles that come uh, up uh, very often in these guidelines. Uh, we've heard uh, them also discussed in the previous uh, presentations. Um, the point uh, of this uh, particular presentation and the proposal that uh, we are making here uh, is uh, that uh, this approach of ethics as um, this approach of ethics through a high-level abstract principle uh, has uh, some limits uh, as well uh, that need to be highlighted. Uh, it's important to uh, be uh, aware of this uh, to make sure that uh, uh, we find ways to complement uh, this approach. Uh, in the best way. Uh, so that's the, the purpose of this uh, proposal that I'm presenting right now. And in particular, uh, this approach um, risks to remain too abstract uh, and disconnected from reality and therefore potentially ineffective uh, to address a, a real uh, practical and concrete uh, impact. Uh, and this is particularly problematic uh, for a technology like AI that uh, itself uh, tends uh, to hide uh, its negative impact on the society and the environment um, uh, behind a supposed immateriality. Uh, uh, there is uh, this uh, very widespread notion of the cloud uh, used to talk about uh, data storage. And I think it's a telling example uh, of this uh, supposed uh, immateriality of uh, AI. Uh, this uh, metaphor hides behind this uh, lovely uh, and uh, harmless cloud, uh, major energy consumption uh, and uh, resource extraction uh, that uh, have a significant uh, environment, uh, environmental impact. Uh, there are some studies uh, on uh, the environment act of AI. Uh, many more uh, are, are needed uh, um, to, to better uh, assess uh, this uh, impact. Uh, but one of them um, has found that uh, training a single AI model can emit as much as as much carbon as five cars in their whole lifetime. So uh, quite a significant uh, environmental impact, uh, which is uh, quite concerning um, today, uh, since we are facing uh, uh, global warming and uh, uh, existential um, threat uh, uh, because of that. So uh, the risk that I want to point out to here is that uh, ethics uh, design as a high level abstract principle may uh, neglect this uh, practical uh, impact of AI, uh, environmental impact, um, existing inequalities in the society uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, 
Uh, and as a matter of fact, uh, AI uh, ethics, uh, this AI ethics in the shape of high level abstract principle has led to a certain discontent uh, from a number of experts. Uh, for instance, um, Ben Wagner has uh, talked about the risk of uh, ethics washing, uh, which is the, uh, the, the misuse of ethics uh, by industry actors to uh, avoid the necessary le legal regulation. Um, Rorina has uh, mentioned this also earlier in her presentation. Um, other uh, experts uh, have um, talked about the uh, risk for AI ethics uh, uh, to, as a securing existing power relations. Uh, this is a critique that has come in particular from uh, the field of uh, data justice, data feminism. Uh, and the, the, the fear here is that uh, AI ethics and its related uh, concepts, this high level uh, abstract principle, uh, um, may further benefit those in power at the expense of others uh, by hiding uh, uh, behind uh, these um, uh, high level principles, uh, existing uh, inequalities uh, faced by different groups. So uh, now I've presented uh, the, the risk of this uh, AI ethics, um, uh, this uh, principled uh, approach, we can uh, call it. Uh, I would like to propose an analysis uh, of this and a way to complement this approach uh, to avoid uh, these uh, limits. And uh, here, uh, the ethics of care and other uh, feminist approaches um, offer particularly uh, useful resources. Uh, the ethics of care, I'm sure uh, some of you are familiar with it, uh, has emerged uh, in the 1980s, uh, and in particular um, has emerged um, as a challenge to uh, the principled approach, otherwise called uh, principalism, uh, arguing that this approach fails to engage with other forms of ethical sensitivity and reasoning that are more context specific and relational and that make it possible to identify other potential issues and uh, ways to mitigate uh, risk. Um, so uh, ethics of care has proposed an approach to ethics that is radically contextual and, uh, and relational. Uh, and I think this is of particular value uh, for uh, the ethics of AI today. More generally, uh, this uh, um, uh, approach uh, is inspired by uh, feminist um, theories that call to move away from uh, the view from nowhere uh, and to recognize that all knowledge is situated, uh, including uh, knowledge produced uh, by AI. Um, for instance, uh, when developing an AI system for the healthcare sector, uh, one should have in mind that uh, women and minorities have been historically underrepresented presented in health data, uh, and this uh, has led to uh, the risk of poor quality healthcare for women and non-white. Uh, hence, uh, we uh, uh, use uh, the use of AI uh, in this field uh, should uh, uh, take this uh, into consideration. Uh, this is a title of an article that um, put this uh, very clearly. If you're not a white male, uh, artificial intelligence used in healthcare could be dangerous. So uh, in a few words, uh, what we propose here is to sh shift away from high level abstract principles to concrete practices and relations, sociopolitical context and uh, materialities. So that's the theoretical uh, shift uh, that is uh, proposed here. Uh, and more concretely, uh, we have broken this uh, down into more uh, practical uh, recommendations addressed to uh, different uh, actors of the uh, AI ecosystems, uh, whether AI ethicists, industry, uh, researchers and developers, and policy makers, uh, and so on. Uh, and here is um, just a few of these recommendations. Um, one of these uh, is uh, particularly key, is the need to engage with uh, social scientists and their research on uh, social impacts of AI uh, in the uh, short term, medium term and longer term to uh, get better understanding of the profound impact that AI is having and potentially uh, for uh, different communities. Uh, also, uh, the need to ensure diversity in the composition of uh, AI team. Uh, 
this is uh, today uh, there is uh, some people have called uh, um, diversity crisis uh, in uh, AI um, among AI uh, developers and researchers uh, and uh, industry developing AI. So this is uh, very important to address to ensure that a diversity of perspectives are taken into account uh, in the development of uh, of AI. Uh, another key recommendations uh, that uh, we made is the need to conduct assessments of uh, ethical, social, environmental, and human rights impact uh, of uh, AI. Uh, also, the need to engage more with the impacted communities to better understand, once again, uh, these uh, impacts. Um, another one uh, is to de the need to recognize that not all social problems can be solved with uh, technology. Uh, often uh, we, turn to, we seem to be turning to AI to, to solve uh, many uh, problems that are actually deep, uh, profound, uh, structural uh, social problems. Um, so a series of recommendations that uh, I invite you to uh, uh, look at. Um, this is uh, part of the deliverable um, that will be made available uh, in a couple of months once approved uh, by, by the Commission. And uh, it's also going to be published a uh, couple of weeks uh, on the new publishing platform, Open Research Europe. So please do uh, take a look at this. And um, yeah, uh, if we have time, I'm happy to take a few questions. <laughs> 